I know you guys have probably have stuff to say. So I just, please give me one second to give my, my thoughts here. Aaron, you live in Texas. Where do you live, Dave? Uh, Los Cal Angeles. Los Angeles. Okay. Mm -hmm. I live in Washington state. If I were to fly to you in Los Angeles, it would take me two, two and a half hours to get to Texas. I think it's like three, three and a half, something like that. If I was just talking to you and you knew I was here. Okay. And I ended up on your couch. Like, in an hour or two or something, something crazy. You'd be like, what the heck just happened? So how did he get here? You wouldn't automatically think time machine or wizard somehow teleported me or something like that. You would probably start using deductive reasoning. You'd probably go, all right, maybe he knows someone who has a private jet. Uh, maybe he took a flight and this flight had a direct flight somehow went faster than usual. The pilot had hurt. You would use natural world reasoning to deduce, how did he end up on my couch? Now, imagine I was dead and I couldn't be examined. You couldn't ask me questions, but I just am on your couch. I got there somehow. Now, life is here. Life got here somehow. And while James Tor continuously does the scientific, we don't know, uh, he likes to throw the we don't know, and I feel like he's hiding behind that. Ultimately, though, we're here. How did we get here? And using what you just asked there, Arn, it seems common sense to me. We would look for natural processes, even if we don't know the exact model in which actually fits the criteria. One of those is more probable. Abiogenesis is more probable than any alternative aliens came and planted it or God with a wand or God spoke kind of thing. Wouldn't we all agree that that would be the most common sense approach? James Tour had already admitted early on in the debate in a more or less subtle way that he favors the biblical mythology. So it well, wouldn't matter. I had to prove it with a quote. <laughs> okay. That, that's yeah. what it That's what it was. You're quoting him from somewhere else. So yeah. he didn't want to admit that no, he in the course of the debate, it, but in a friendly uh, audience, he, he's outright says it. Yeah. Yeah. So has he ever admitted to being a young earth creationist? Because I've heard that from a number of other people. So he hasn't flat out admitted, but he's made content where he goes, how old is the earth? I don't know. I don't know how to. So he's either a young earth creationist and won't come out and say it, or he's not a young earth creationist, but he kind of like plays agnostic on it to keep because he knows there's young earth creationists in his flock. Mm -hmm. And he wants to hang on to him. So he can't go, no, the earth is 4.6 billion years old, you idiot. Uh, he has to like, I'm not sure. I'm not a geo. It's like, well, how about you trust what geologists say? Huh? How's that for a concept? But he'll say, I don't work in that field, so I don't know. But he doesn't work in origin of life research either. And he doesn't understand that field. So it's just a lot of hypocrisy. But anyway, so no. It here's the thing. The, the point of the debate uh, is, is, are we clueless? So that means... All you need to do to win is to provide a clue, yeah. a single fact and evidence, right? And it's better if you get a whole bunch of them. But, you know, the, the way I always open up this discussion, okay, here's our first clue. We have all of these things where they don't, none of these things show up until after some point in history. And we can go back down through the different developmental stages. You heard him counting out. That's 30 seconds. So I'm, I'm on a time limit here. When Tour dodged my question. And I'm in the last in line and they're trying to hurry and get this massive crowd out of this building. I already know they're not going to allow me a follow up. I'm not going to be able to pursue him. Mm -hmm. So when he says, hey, we got here somehow, and he's, he's just not going to answer it at all. Yeah. So I there's mean, nowhere I can go with that. The, the only problem with the question, I mean, it's a very commonsensical question. But what you were framing was that it, it, the evidence overwhelmingly suggests that all life evolved from a single common ancestor that we would call the first living organism. So the only problem is that that's not quite how the debate was framed. We were trying to discuss the event that led to that first common ancestor. So although he totally denies evolution, too, and all of those DI guys, they all deny evolution as well. That's not what the discussion was. So he was able to evade that question because we were talking about bottom up to get to that first uh, proto cell. That's the common ancestor of all life. So like, yeah, it totally makes sense what you said. Like everything is suggesting that life arose and then all life evolved from this thing, you know, but it's just that you were looking at it from the flip side of that one event going forward, whereas everything was supposed to be framed in terms of getting to that. So that's why he was able to just dodge it and not 
care. So he gave, courtesy of your quote, we have his position because I've noticed when you date, when you debate with like flat earth people or Mm -hmm. young earth creationists, they don't have a model. They don't have any explanation for fuck all ever. Nothing. Right. It just, it's every, it all comes down to whatever science can't explain, therefore is explained by magic. So unexplained means explained by magic. And yeah, they'll say that it's not magic, but supernatural miracles, enchantments, blessings, curses, necromancy, magic. If it's supernatural, it's magical. That's the That's why I was saying, Aaron, imagine I was on your couch in let's yeah. say an hour and a half or two hours, but you know a typical regular flight takes three and a half. Let's just play yeah. that game. You're still not going to go. Damn, we found a time machine or somehow a portal that he. Did you catch through. a ride in an F F sixteen? Right. I may or have you lied. You were not actually at home. That was exactly. pre-recorded footage or something. There's anything an more possible or more plausible than the magical one. Is so cool. one of the things I would have hit him on because because of you know uh, Farina's quote you know he so he's gonna he's gonna go with the biblical mythology, hit him on that first. We we get to the other stuff when we get there, but first we set the stage. So he has to then deny all of this evidence. You know what what it, if it's not a clue? I mean we have eighty percent of the history of life on Earth is microscopic and microbial. That implies something. You know, so that's that's data that must be considered, but he's not going to consider that. What Tour said instead in another one of uh, Farina's quotes from him, and this was stunningly stupid. Um, James Tour gave a definition of abiogenesis that was actually a grotesque chick tracked parody of evolution, wherein he said the second dumbest thing I've ever heard a creationist say to describe evolution slash abiogenesis. He says a bunch of molecules get together to become slithering creatures. And then those molecules crawl out of the water. Yeah. This is a guy with a PhD. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's one of the dumbest lies he tells. And so I made it a point in one of my prompts to hammer him on some of these lies that he tells all the time and i got i got that quote and i it was a direct quote and i put it on a slide and i highlighted in red the parts that matter and i showed what they he says that that's what all the textbooks say and so i hammered him and said where are the textbooks show me a textbook that says this he can't do it he goes here's the list of textbooks that's just a list of textbooks show me a page where it says that i'm showing you what the textbooks actually say and he just kept squirming and squirming and that's where he started to really ramp up the volume because he knows he's lying but he's a narcissist so he cannot admit that he has lied so he has to like always be right but this i it's just undeniable that he lies about what's in the textbooks and he says it all the time so he started to get really angry because i was exposing numerous lies (laughs) if you make a claim of fact or truth that you're going to assert that something is is true or the truth and it's not evidently true and there's no way you could possibly know that either way there's two ways to describe that. That's either faith or it's lies. And I don't know that there's a way to distinguish between the two. Oh, it's for sure lies. I mean, it, well, the, the what's the difference? Say that. Yeah. You're, you're saying you're claiming things to be true that are not true. Mm-hmm. It, it's not evidently true. There's no evidence to show it. And there's no way you could know that either. So your faith is all about pretending to know what you oh. don't know, which is itself a lie. Claiming facts yeah. that are not facts, which is also a lie. But this is we very know the, easy to know. You could look in the books and see that they don't say that. <laughs> like, so I've been offering to prove evolution to the creationists own satisfaction because you can't prove anything mathematically in science, as you know, but you can prove something to somebody's satisfaction, doing a colloquial definition. And I always say that, you know, we're going to do this like in a legal context of an overwhelming preponderance of evidence beyond reasonable doubt. But in the very few times that that, that I've made that challenge and the, and the creationists haven't just scattered like cockroaches when you turn on the kitchen light because they're, they, they are afraid of the light of reason. In the very few instances where one has such emboldened faith that they would actually take on the challenge, they, they, plummet face plant right at the very beginning because we open with definitions and their their straw man doesn't work they have to show academic science sources that this is what is being taught 
Here it is from Berkeley University Ev Evolution 101. Here it is from Stanford or whatever. Here are, here are the citations. Here's how they define evolution. Funny, it's never one kind of thing changing into another fundamentally different kind of no. thing. It's never life from non-life. It's not everything from nothing. It's, it's not Darwinism. Not, it's not Darwinism. <laughs> exactly. So I can never get them to admit the fact already demonstrated that here is the definition from all these different universities, all these different textbooks. Here's how, here's the direct quotations from all of them. Do you understand and accept that this is the definition and not the one that you got from the convicted fraud with the phony degree? Right. Not answers in Genesis uh, straw man version. 